Hello, viewer. It's great having you on the show today. And welcome to another exciting edition of Viewpoint. It is an exciting and interactive talk show with the Tokam as EB. On the show, we talk about everything and anything trending, ranging from entertainment to politics, health, education, lifestyle, power of community, you just name it. All you need to do is sit back, enjoy, and engage in our conversations. My name is Hadiza Galadima, right here with me in the studio, and my amazing co-host, Confidence. Hi, Hadiza. Hi, Rachel. Hello, Confidence. And Rachel. Hi, Hadiza. How are you there? Yeah. All we do on the show is spark meaningful conversations, inspire change within our community as we engage in honest dialogue. And now, straight to the business of the day. Let's get started. In the words of Albert Einstein, peace is not kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. As usual, we will be discussing some really intriguing topics today. Firstly, we will talk about the ongoing strike by the Nigerian resident doctors. Also, we will talk about social media addiction. And lastly, we will be talking about building a meaningful and strategic relationships. All this and more after the break. Experience the acceleration of Oweleke TV. Get the latest news from the glitz and glamour of the entertainment industry to the pulse-pounding realm of sports. We we'll provide accurate and up-to-date information, exclusive interviews with top political analysts that will leave you craving more. Our team of professionals delivers captivating contents from Nigeria and beyond. Follow us on our social media handles at Ubeleke TV. Visit our website at www.ubeleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Ubeleke TV, rising star at the fairground. Welcome back, and thanks for staying with us. This is Viewpoint, talk show with the talk am as EB. The ongoing resident doctor strike has intensified, leading to hospitals discharging patients due to the unavailability of adequate medical care. As doctors continue their protests for better working conditions, higher salaries, and improved healthcare infrastructure, the impact on patients' well-being and access to medical services becomes increasingly pronounced. What comes to mind is how patients and their families are coping with the consequences of the strike, particularly those who require ongoing medical treatment or critical care. So now the question is, what impact does this strike have on patient care and what measures should the federal government seek to address concerns as regards this strike and to prevent further actions? Well, I wouldn't want to take it from the angle <coughs> of um, patient care. Okay. You know, um, I feel like Nigerians, we don't pay attention to some some really critical issues. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to take it from patient care. Mm -hmm. um, I, w I want to take it from the angle of these medical doctors. I feel like um, we don't appreciate these people enough. enough. I feel like we don't appreciate them enough. Because um, my mom usually says something. When a child is sick, it is not the only thing the child is feeling is the pain. Mm -hmm. It is the person taking care of that child that knows what he or she will go through. You know, running about, even you yourself, you're already in pain mm -hmm. and all of that. Now talk more of a medical doctor, a nurse, medical practitioners generally. I feel like um, we're not appreciating them enough. And the government, let's leave the government out of this Absolutely. because we know the government has we'll failed us woefully. They will not do anything. We have um we talked about um the Labour Congress yesterday mm -hmm. going on strike and doctors going on strike. I feel like we shouldn't even be saying government should help or government should come. If they want to help, let them help. But we know the government will not help. It's a normal thing, even if they want to help. I feel um medical practitioners, you know, um every every organization like this, they have a body. Mm -hmm. Teachers have um um teachers union. union, 
um, journalists have journal. I think these medical doctors that should come together. Look, we have doctors running out of the country on a daily basis, going out in their numbers mm-hmm. because when they go there, they appreciate them. When you see a medical doctor, a medical doctor, look, where we were growing, these people are people that we respect. Then if they ask a child, what do you want to become in future? That's, those are the only thing, doctor, lawyer. But now we realize that these people, doctors that are the like, most insulted people mm-hmm. in this our country, but when they go out, you see them, you look at them like, yes, wow. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I think these people should come together. It's not about going on strike. When you go on strike, the truth is that government will not do anything. Go on strike from, they will only come and talk, talk, talk as usual. Mm -hmm. I think these people should come together and help themselves. Help yourselves. Go about it anyhow you want to go about it. Because right now, going on strike, you're putting um, people, sick people in more danger. I'm so sure people will die in this period. That's the truth. Let's not sugarcoat or try to say God mm-hmm. forbid. Mm-hmm. Because there are some people now that what they need is just a little care and they'll be fine. And if that little care is not there, anything can happen. If you're going on strike, which means you're turning your back, you're closing your eyes and you're saying anything will happen, may happen. You don't care because the government is not helping you. The same government you and I know we will not help you in the first place. My own take on this is these people should come together. Think of something. If you want to all go out of this country, go. If that's the only solution, go. Because me, if I am a medical practitioner and I'm not being appreciated, I'm not I'm not earning what I should be. And I have family for Christ's sake. If I'm not if I'm not being appreciated, I will go. If you want to go, go. But then again, if you want if you choose that, okay, you want to work in Nigeria, you want to help people, you want to help the sick, because this is what you're called to do. Come together and think of something, a better way to go about it. Mm-hmm. Not going on strike. I think that's my take on that. Well, um <clears throat> for me personally, I think um the government has they don't have, they do not value the health factor or mm-hmm. the health sector, sector. Mm. just like they undervalue every other sector of the Nigerian um, economy, mm. not just Nigerian economy, Nigeria as a whole. <clears throat> they undervalue every sector. The health sector is one of the most important sectors in you know, our country because a lot has to do, a lot is tied to health mm-hmm. and well-being. Yeah. So, Doctors, especially because the private um, organizations is not so prevalent there, but you know, doctors in the um, the government facet, mm-hmm. doctors that you know work under government hospitals, they are the ones who bear this brunt, and it is sad because the Nigerian government cannot say that they don't see money. Mm-hmm. For God's sake, where is all these billions, billions, billions? It, the government, the people in power at the helm of affairs. This money is there. And this money, you know, they sit down every year and they draft budget for different sectors. Mm-hmm. And then you wonder why each or each and every one of this sector is not getting the money that is needed. Go to some government hospitals and you'll be mm-hmm. shocked. Their state, you know, the it's way their yeah. state of maintenance is just bad. Mm. The uh, um, um, doctors and the nurses themselves, nothing to write home about, yeah. you know. So it's like you find a group of individuals who are tired mm-hmm. because now, you know, we are talking about feeling pity for them. Some of these people too self are undereducated. The educated ones are tired. The ones who actually want to give back to their community are tired. Mm-hmm. They are not getting compensation for it. Okay, fine. Okay, you're not compensating us. What about infrastructure? I mean, have you been to certain government hospitals lately? Is 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 an ISO. You know, certain facilities that things that should be in a, in a hospital, things that should be in a place that requires, you know, healthcare and that has everything to do with health. Everything, nothing is there. And then you're wondering, you're asking yourself, where are we going? You know, patients come, they cannot get the, you know, required care that they need. And you see sometimes, because most times the reason why people go to government hospitals is because they feel it's cheaper. Cheaper. You know, private hospitals, they are owned by private individuals and private individuals, definitely they will need, there are things that they will need to run their hospitals. They will not run it like the government, government hospitals. But then when you get to the government hospitals, most of those things are not there. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper, but people are still dying because what is supposed to be there is not there. So, Rachel said something about strike. The truth is, eh, this country, we've come to a place where we've come to a level where going on strike and protesting is no longer effective. Mm-hmm. We just need to tell ourselves the truth and call a spade a spade. Now, I'm um, talking about them getting themselves together. Truly, some of them don't even have, they don't have the, um, what's the word now? They don't have the incentives or they don't even have, they don't know how to, even if they come together, some of them are just living off of what the government pays them. 
Do you understand? And some of them, even if they want to go out of the country, they don't have the means. So it's like a group of people who are just handicapped here in one position. They don't know how to go left. They don't know how to go right. And probably even if they had a union, you'd ask yourself how much, okay, even in that union, what is even going on there? How much are they making? Do you understand? These are people who work for the government. And for Christ's sake, people who work for the government, the government is supposed to compensate them even more than private individuals. That is actually how it's meant to be. Do you understand? But that's not the case. And then you said something. You said if they go on strike, people are definitely going to die. It's the reality. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Even if people don't die, it's going to put, everybody's just going to be in a handicapped position. It's going to push patients don't have a means of, you know, bringing health care for themselves. So it's going to push them going to private hospitals and they'll have to pay higher. So it's like everybody's just, it's holding everybody in the neck. So that's why everybody's, it's like everybody's last resort now is going on strike. But if they still go on strike, the question remains, what will the, the government, government do? Because it's a very big thing that the, the uh, um, um, resident doctors are going on strike. Mm -hmm. You go to the hospital. It's not the first time. It's not the second time. You come to the hospital. You see a woman in labor. She yeah, wants to deliver. And then you're hearing, doctor is not on ground. Mm. We take it lightly. We joke about it. But it's a serious. There are cases and mortality rates day by day. So it's, it's not about going on strike. Protesting is good. Let the government. But the problem is, will the government listen? And some of them that have the opportunity to go out, when they go out, you know, it's always good when you leave your home because you are in such of a greener pastures. Mm -hmm. When you equip yourself, when you have the knowledge, when you have everything, what's what's the right thing to do? You're come supposed to come home. back and so that water. Can frustrate them again. But you see that once anybody that leaves this country, especially if they are not living to just go and, you know, take knowledge, and once they leave, they've left. That's it. Man. Once they go, they don't go. I know and, people. And so it's sad. sad. It's really sad because they really said health is well, right? And most of these doctors, when you visit them in the hospitals, because they know that government hospital doesn't have the facilities you need most times when mm -hmm. you said that, they refer you to private hospitals. Yes. And because of the government is not even doing what they're supposed to do, most of these doctors own the private hospitals. Exactly. Themselves. So they will refer you to their hospitals whereby they will give you a better treatment. Why, why do you even think sometimes when you go to the hospital, a doctor or a nurse is just treating you anyhow, oh, shouting. Oh, she's, she's, like she's only transferring she's aggression. aggression. Yes. Yeah, she's, she's not so well paid. They're not families. taking care of them. And so when you come, she will use that anger okay. to, to, to treat you. And it's wrong, actually. It's not like we're defending it because some mm -hmm. of these doctors, I mean... Some of them are just naturally It's weekend. not like we're defending them, but, you know, some of these doctors, some of these things, they are pent-up aggression. And, you know, stories that you've heard that is a doctor that killed this patient. Mm -hmm. doctor that, we're not defending them, but let's be honest, some of these things, they build yeah. up. So what do you think? Is them going on strike the right thing to do or they should reconsider because of humanity, because of the lives at stake? We would love to hear from you. As always, to get involved in our comment section. We will be going on a short break right now. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Moving on to our next topic, we will be discussing social media addiction. And social media addiction refers to the compulsive and excessive use of social media platforms to the extent that it negatively impacts an individual's daily life, mental well-being, and overall productivity. As social media has become an integral part of modern life, the addictive nature of these platforms has become a grown concern. People may find themselves constantly checking notifications, scrolling through feeds, and spending excessive hours online, leading to various adverse effects. So what impact does this have on the society and even the younger generations coming up? And how can we strike a balance between utilizing social media for connectivity and avoiding the pitfall of addiction and excess screen time? <laughs> social media <laughs> um, well social media addiction is a thing that has been you know and it doesn't look like it's stopping anytime soon mm -hmm. now while I would like to you know advocate for a lot of people who mm -hmm. make their money off mm -hmm. of this same social media you know I would also say that too much of everything is bad, bad. because everything that has um, a good side, 
definitely have a bad side. Everything that has an advantage has a disadvantage. And like I said, too much of everything is bad. Even doctors will tell you that when you drink water too much, mm-hmm. you get what they do for your body. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, while, you know, using social media is good because you need to stay up to date with what is happening, but there's a, there's a line. There's something called boundary, mm-hmm. which I think is not present in this generation. You know, while people want to be innovative and creative and, you know, making new things every day, wanting to be at the top, make the world better, make things easier for everybody. I feel like there are some group of people who, they are like when I started, I said, while I want to advocate for people, there are people who make money off of this thing. Mm-hmm. This is their, it's their life's like, work, like, it's their career. Now, there's another group of people who, their work is just to stay on social media and just be scrolling. While it was time. Just Thank you. While in away time, wasting you know, time. wasting precious time, what, what they are supposed to be doing, you know, they have a lot of activities because every day when you wake up in the morning, even if you don't have you know, a job, but there's something you set up for yourself. Probably mm-hmm. you read for two hours, you do this, you do that. But there are some people that just wake up and the first thing you go for, your yeah. phone. And then they stay on that phone. They stay there switching from app to app to app, app to app to app, from morning till you know, night. Day. And, you know, it sounds like, excuse me, it sounds like a joke, but it's true. There are people like that. They spend almost half of the day on social media just scrolling through, watching posts. And you wonder, scientists will always, always say that too much of screen time has what it does. Yeah. It depletes, it depletes, you know, was it brain cells, but it has what it does to your psyche. Because we as human beings, you know, we are created by God to actually think. Mm -hmm. You spend your time putting this brain to work, Mm -hmm. you know, trying to create something, trying to, for Christ, people that have invented stuff, it's not social media that they use, though. They have to sit down and think. Why social media is there to help? But there are some people that that are abusing it. And it's doing something so bad to our young generation that we're not even seeing it. You know, disassociating yourself exactly, and you know, some people they they use because you know, it's it's part of all these are social, um, like all these stereotypes. Some people use it as a mask for I'm an introvert, Mm -hmm. and no, 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 I don't talk to some people actually use it as an excuse because they are they are so addicted to their phones, to social media. Sometimes they do it to the detriment of themselves. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Somebody will just sit down, you're talking, you can't, you're talking with somebody, and you see. People cannot even give in a gathering. You can't find people just, you know, gather together talking to themselves without phone must be there. So somebody must be scrolling through social media. Somebody must be doing something. And you know, it's it's something that we've not as a society, as a people, we don't want to what's the word that we don't want to accept that reality that it's actually killing us, it's doing more harm than good. That's why you see a lot of things. People, people are copying trends that they're not supposed to be copying, adapting to stuff that they're not supposed to be adapting. No, exactly. Depression and all that and In social media. Social I want people. to be like this person. I want to be like, you're putting yourself under undue pressure. Mm-hmm. Why? Because you spent out of the 24 hours that God gave us, you spent let's say 23 point, 23 mm-hmm. and a half hours scrolling through social media and it's not like if you ask them okay what did you do for today or more that's what you hear you know and then there's no productive thing that that person has done for that day so i think it's a big issue addiction is actually something that is addiction is not just it's not something the way we're seeing it like metal Mm -hmm. people can be addicted to different things Mm -hmm. addicted to food can be addicted to sex addicted Mm -hmm. to so many things um so social media addiction I don't see it as being normal anymore because just the same way someone can be addicted to food. Mm-hmm. Can, you can't do without this thing. You want sometimes you want you can't help it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you want to stop it. You want to leave it. Sometimes you even say, okay, this today I don't want to do this thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you're addicted to it. You see yourself yeah. going back to yeah. it. Um they say it's, it's better not to start Something. a thing ahead than now you started it and you're not able to go out again. I think um first it, it's on like different faces. Mm-hmm. There are people who are already addicted. There are people who are at the verge of being addicted. You wake up in the morning, you wake up, and the first most we do it. Most of us do it. You wake up in the morning and the first thing, because your phone is just next to your pillow, the first thing you do is pick up your phone and you just go online. You want to see what's happening. Uh-huh. Then you went, you went to brush your teeth, took your bath, you eat, and the next Some thing you're even brushing your teeth. So, basically. Yes, mm-hmm. and still going through phone. You may not be addicted at that point, but you're already at the verge of getting addicted. And if you give yourself a few months or a few weeks, you might just fall into addiction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think um 
addiction is not something we should just say, okay, you need to stop, you need not to stop. People who do businesses online, they are not, I don't think they are addicted to social media. Yeah, they're simply yeah, doing their business. Yeah, because if that if they are not doing that business or if that business maybe um crash or maybe they stop the business, they may not give so much um pay so much attention to social media the way they do because of their business. But then you're addicted to social media, you're wasting resources because you buy data, mm-hmm. exactly. you're wasting you your money, data. you're wasting your time. The time is supposed it's to think of life. something. So many people I'm so sure people have been chased away from maybe the kind the jobs they do because mm. of because you're not paying your your boss at work may not know that it is your it is an addiction. They may just be like, you know, they concentrate. If they give and work, he, he doesn't meet targets. But mm. when you're supposed to meet targets, you're pressing phone. So, this is a really big issue. I just think just help yourself. We don't believe in therapy in Nigeria. I would say go for therapy. But I think you need to watch yourself. You need to help yourself. You need to, first of all, tell yourself the truth. You need to be able to say, yes, I am addicted to something. You need to agree that I am addicted to this thing before you can help yourself. There are people who are addicted to it and they tell them, this thing you're doing is getting too much. I'll be like, no, 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 I know what I'm doing. You can't help that kind of person. But first, understand that as we're saying it now, even we, there are times when we wake up in the morning and we pick our phone. We mm-hmm. should understand that when we continue this thing, a time will come where mm-hmm. we cannot do without our phones. Mm-hmm. And those are the kind of people that, when that's why you see some girls, once their phone goes missing mm-hmm. or something happens to their phone, they, they can do anything. That's why you see them, they can sleep with men just to get money just to buy phone. phone. Yeah. So I think we just need to help ourselves. As a mother, as parents, as as, as friends, your, mm-hmm. your friend is... You know, she's already or he's already at the verge of getting addicted. Tell the person, see, a time will come. You're not addicted yet, but a time will come when you cannot do anything without this phone. Your phone yes. um, just just before um, Hatiza said something, I just wanted to add, it's a personal thing. Mm-hmm. There was a time it was like that for me, but um, I'm a firm believer that when you want to stop a bad habit, people think, okay, stopping a bad habit, you have to do so much. Mm-hmm. When you want to stop a bad habit, you begin to read the good habits. Yeah. For example, okay, there was a time in my life, then in school, I just wake up in the morning and the first thing is my phone. I had to consciously talk to me. People said, you know, someone close to me said telling me, you're becoming addicted to your phone. And, you know, at every slightest opportunity, I, got, I flared up. I was yeah. like, what is your problem? Yeah. You know, but at some point, I, in hindsight, I began to, you know, find out that sometimes my battery is low and I'm charging it. I find out that I feel useless. That's that was like, when I exactly. understood that this thing but you were ready to help yourself and so that was why it, you got out it, of it. It, it, it it gets to a point but you know family okay i just had asked the question she said how do we limit screen time i think from the family pres- um, aspect parents should also do a lot mm-hmm. um in stopping there are things that you have to deprive those children mm-hmm. but like this coming generation and there are things you actually have to deprive them to help them and i am happy for one that personally personally experienced my parents deprived me of phone at that young age i got my first phone at what age you know but at that point i'd grown Mm -hmm. but even as an adult because some of these things we don't talk about it enough you need to like tell yourself that okay this thing is getting too much you know so i have to start curbing it in the morning when i open my head i'm not the phone is even far from me so it's like it's hard, but you have to tell yourself that this thing is becoming bad for me. Mm-hmm. And then again, you know, putting your eye on the screen too much, it, it, they give a headache. Mm-hmm. Yes, it, it has, it has things it does to your health. So I think the first um, uh, part is realizing mm-hmm. that this is a problem. Because most people don't know that they have a problem. Realizing that this thing is becoming an addiction and I have to start doing something about it. So the first thing is switch off. You, if you go without your phone for a day, nothing will happen to you. You know, nothing will happen to us as young people. If you keep your phone, switch it off, turn it on airplane mode, get a book, do something else. Just don't be near the phone. Nothing will happen to you. I've done it and I know it works. Confidence has just said it all. So I don't need to say much again. So we'll, we'll be going on a short break. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Moving on to our last topic for today, we will be talking about building on meaningful and strategic relationships. So building meaningful and strategic relationships is, is a crucial aspect of personal and professional growth. Okay, These relationships go beyond superficial connections and focus on establishing deep authentic connections with others. Meaningful relationships are built on trust, respect, 
empathy and understanding when while strategic relationships involve intentional networking and collaboration to achieve specific objectives. So how do we define a meaningful relationship and what role does it play in personal and professional growth? Rachel. Okay, so there's something I, um, I adopted mm -hmm. for quite some time now. And I think I saw a post, I, someone made that post and I just adopted it. The person said, the fact say you know people. The fact say you know so many people. No me say you don't know people. No okay. me say you don't get connected. Mm. Some people, they'll, feast, they'll be like, ah, my father, my father, brother, now this, my uncle, now that, my this, now that. Doesn't mean say you don't get connection. There's something I, I also adopted. As a person, when I have people who are jealous of me, when I have friends, when I have friends, when I have 10 friends, and eight of my friends are people who are like, oh, Mokai, Richard, she's doing well. Mm -hmm. oh, man, just, I don't have friends. I want to have friends. I want to have friends that I'll be the one to say, ah, I you want to be to. like this person. The kind of friends that we have these days, ah, when she they use iPhone no more, I want to be, I want to be her friend. Ah, she dress, she dress very fine. I wish to be her friend. Not the kind of friends we are building. We should understand that when we are building friends, build friends that, we, without even speaking with them, without talking to them, mm -hmm. they are they are already inspiring you. Friends that when when you're going wrong, they call you to other. Mm -hmm. Friends that when in your career you're doing something, you should be able to call that friend. Mm -hmm. Hello, babe, how far? See this thing, see this thing. Oh, you're doing like this. Let's do it like this. The kind of friends I see people build are friends that I, I don't have a friend. Barrow, barrow friends. Oh, yes. <laughs> You are friends, and you cannot advise yourself. Oh, yes, members. No one can. You, you cannot advise each other. Um, the other one, they, they gossip. He say, mm -hmm. uh, he go buy phone. He, they do this yeah, one. They do that one. Hey, they behave like saying I ain't no pass. Like, let me tell you something. When someone is saying they behave like saying I ain't no pass, that person no be. That is is just the that mentality the person has. If you, you should be you should be the one saying ah this man or my get brain we hear the whole thing. Those are the kind of oh, friends you should have. But and I, what I see these days is that um, they say you you be hearing friends say she they feel to be she they feel like say she know everything, and then you're you're trying to um count one or two like how did that come about? I think it's just a kind of circle we have. We should be able to have a circle that any day, any time. It doesn't have to be money. So people say I want friends. People say when I call say I need five k. They will feel why I'm that, those are not even friends. Mm. You need friends that people will build values together. Friends that. Your career, your relationship, they are able to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Friends that in that. the next 10 years, even if people don't have each other's phone number, mm -hmm. in the next 10, when your friends see you, will say, Yes, we made it. What are the kind of friends you should have? But these are the friends we have now. On my iPhone, iPhone 13, don't come at that far. Um, but these clothes, the ball straights, they play. <laughs> our, our group, Rachel, because there's this saying that says mm -hmm. the people you have around you now are the connections your, your children are exactly. going to form connections in the future. Yeah. So I would totally agree with you on that. Confidence, let's have your team. Um, it's very important the kind of people you have around you. Mm -hmm. um, the people you have around you will determine how far you go in life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. While I understand that some people do not like staying around people, mm -hmm. you know, those ones are like in a world of their own, but it's very important that you look at your circle, even mm. if it's two or three people, yeah. make sure that they are reasonable people. Mm -hmm. There are people who don't make friends anyhow. And I respect, I doff my heart for people like that. They mm. make strategic friendships, Friend. strategic and meaningful relationships. Mm -hmm. yes. when, when you come, they they cruise or they they vibe. Yeah. But trust me, you Value. learn a lot. If you're my friend and I can't learn something from you, you can't learn something friend. from me. There's a question. There's a question. Yeah. So I think it's very important, you know, to help personal growth, career growth, you know, professional growth, all round growth. There are people you can call and you can ask questions, and any day, anytime, you'll be feel refreshed. If you're if you're if you're friends with somebody and every time you're around those people, they are draining you. Mm. You need to ask yourself certain questions. Mm. Anytime you are uh, you're around them, your IQ is depleted. Mm. Yeah. Ask yourself certain questions. Mm -hmm. You need to be around people you know, and you as a person, you know, as you as an individual, mm. you know, you also need to be somebody that when somebody's your friend, mm. they're happy because they know that anytime they come around this person, yeah. they, learn. they learn. So I and think you it's very important. Also. Your circle, the circle of people you keep, 
It's very, very important. Very important. If you are the well, most intelligent person in, in your group, run. Oh, run. <laughs> run. So what we're just trying to say, or what we've been trying to say on the show right now is just cultivate a meaningful and strategic relationship because it is essential to achieving our goals and optimizing potentials by building and nurturing these two types of re- uh, relationship. You can unlock full potentials and lead m- and lead more successfully and fulfilling lives that way. Well, that's it on today's edition. You already know. Talk show when you talk um, as EB. Really do appreciate you and your time. Let's do this again. Same place, same time. We would love to hear from you. So drop your opinions in our comment section. All right. Don't forget to follow all our social media handles displayed on your screen for more exciting and captivating episodes of Viewpoint. Also subscribe and turn on your little notification bell on our YouTube channel at Omilike TV. Our website is omilike.tv. So we'll come your way again. See you next time.